Hello, welcome to part two of our video lesson on how to perform spatial analysis of data using QGIS and Snapchat. In the first part of this lesson, I walk you through the data set we will be representing on the map. I hope you have your software installed and your Excel file downloaded. We have our software and data set ready to use. To represent it on a map in QGIS, we need a shape file. A shape file is a format for storing geometric locations and the attribute information of geographic features. The geographic features in this case will be the regions of Cameroon. You will understand this better when we go to the software. To download shape files for Cameroon or any other country, you may use different websites. My favorite is the Humanitarian Data Exchange which you can access using this link. I will have it in the comment section. Before downloading the shapefile, it is important that you organize your computer files nicely into folders. It is a good practice in order not to have things messed up. Let me show you how. Here on my desktop, I have created a folder known as Spatial Data Analysis. Within this folder, I have four subfolders. The shapefile subfolder will contain the shapefiles we will be downloading in a moment. The second, which is the dataset subfolder, will contain our Excel file. The third, which is the project subfolder, will contain our project which we will be saving from QGIS. And the fourth, which is known as maps, will contain the maps which we are going to be producing. So if you have your things organized like this, you will have less worries. Here is what the Humanitarian Data Exchange website looks like. In the search data sets right here, I will type in Cameroon and click on the search button. Different data for Cameroon is now displayed. Things we are interested in administrative divisions, I will select administrative divisions here in the left. My search is now for the refined. I now click on Cameroon administrative level 0 to 3 boundaries. And the map of Cameroon is displayed with the different types of files you can access. Since we are interested in shape files, which has the SHP at the end, I will now download the shape files. And as you can see, my files are being downloaded at this corner. So let's now access our downloaded file. By default, it is stored in the downloads folder of your computer, just as we saw when we downloaded QGIS and Synapse. Double click this folder to open. You now have a series of numerous files. Copy everything and paste in your shapefiles folder you created earlier. You now right click, go to group by and take type. If you scroll down, you will now see your shape files organized nicely here. With your shape files organized in the shape file subfolder and your Excel file in the dataset subfolder, let's now move to looking at the QGIS interface. The QGIS browser is a panel in QGIS that lets you easily navigate in your database and provides quick access to your folders. In the layers list, 
you can see a list at any time of all the layers available to you. The status bar shows you information about the current map. It also allows you to adjust the map scale, the map rotation, and see the mouse cursor's coordinates on the map. This brings us to the menu toolbar. Your most often used set of tools can be turned into toolbars for basic access. For example, the file toolbar allows you to save, load, print, and start a new project. You can easily customize the interface to see all of the tools you use most often. The Attributes toolbar, which is also a component of the menu toolbar, holds the attribute table, which displays features of a selected layer. Yet another component of the menu toolbar is the vector toolbar. It provides a one-stop resource for many common vector-based GIS tasks. Then we have the map canvas. This is where the map itself is displayed and where layers are loaded. In the map canvas, you can interact with the visible layers. Zoom in, out, move the map, select features, and many other operations. Having the map displayed in mind as your final product, let's now dive into QGIS. Go to the GIS icon on your desktop and double click to launch the application. Once the application is fully launched, you will have something like this. Click on New Empty Project to start a new project. Now you have a full blank project. Let's now save the project into our project file. Go to Project, Save as, we go to our desktop, identify our file or our folder, the special data analysis. Then we go to project and we give the project a name. Let's call this my first project. Now you click on save. Now you can see here the name of your project, my first project. To bring our shape files into QGIS, what we do is to click here, restore down. We now go to our folder, go to shape files. I will group again by type. And I'll now move to the shape files. I will select all the files that end with a .sph Click, hold and drag and drag into the layers list I will now close this the shapefile subfolder and maximize my QGIS with our shape files now imported into the layers list in QGIS, we now have a map displayed on the map canvas. QGIS displays what is found on the topmost layer. The arrows to the left of the layers permit you to choose what to display. Let us be more practical. If I come to the first layer and I take off this arrow, you realize that the next layer is displayed. In this case, it contains the administrative level three, which is the district level. If I toggle that off, we now have the next level. I think admin two is the district level and admin three are the villages. If I toggle this off, we now have the provincial level, which is what is of interest to us. If I also toggle that off, then we have nothing displayed on the canvas. So for now, I will toggle the admin one level on, which is what is of interest to us. Let's now look at the attributes of our layer of interest. To do so, 
click to select the layer of interest then move to the attribute toolbar and click on the attribute table the attribute table is now displayed on the attribute table you can now see the properties of the different features of our map for example we have the administrative names of the different regions in english in french we have the shape area we also have the shape length 